the Phil and Florence YouTube channel. Uh, do you have a Weber kettle? So do I. What do you do with your port leads from your wireless thermometer? I guess they just drape under the lid down the side to your thermometer. If you have a barbecue guru, you know what you have to do if you well, have I that. You have to bore, bore another hole uh, further down and somewhere below this where the other wires will be ported through. But I'm going to install this adapter, this Barbecue Guru fan adapter, what the fan plugs into right here, and you'll see all that later on. So I'm going to get to it, and I'll and show you how an inch hole. Uh, I'm going to go with the 7 8 So uh, that's big enough to do what this needs to push, to push the air this needs to push through it. So I'll have plenty of metal, plenty of meat left on that kettle for this, because this doesn't go through, it sits on top of the outside. So you want a little bit of metal, so there'll be, a, you know, an eighth of an inch of metal left for this to seat against. And then this uh, vent is on the inside, and it's got a little airspace here that goes down and this deflects any ash or because it's going to be at an angle kind of like that on the inside of the kettle so that's why you need that on there to keep the ash and the hot coals from dropping down in that hole through this uh, nipple here all right you hang with me and uh, we'll see how I'm things you do. may want to consider before you drill your holes of course you you got another location you don't want to put anything up here that's going to get in the way of you working with your food on the pit. So, you know, most of the time I have my slow and sear set up over here. I don't want to put the, the wiring coming in over there where all that heat is. Uh, it's not good for your wires. It will crisp them up and burn them up. So I'm going to be working over here on this side, probably in this quarter over here, you know, from uh, right about here to right about there in that area. Uh, I do like to put my dragon wing up there on the right side. I'm right-handed, you know, that's just normal, but I can put it over there. So those are things you have to think about before you drill your hole. Um, this grommet for your uh, wireless thermometer port, it needs to go right above the grill. So you don't have a whole lot of room. So that thing's going to have to go close to the top to get over the top of the, the grill grate. Right about this, uh, there. Adapter uh, for the Guru. They say put it under the uh, charcoal grate. So, to do that, I'm going to have to pick a spot, say if it's closed, I can bring it back and let the ash down. If I take this thing and put it right about there, I'll just have to figure that one out to where it'll miss the grate and, be, and miss that uh, clean out, but I'm going to be positioning it right of course, there's a space here, so I think there's enough room actually to get it right about. I'll get it right there. below that uh, the, the ridge of that charcoal grate. That'll work. That'll still give me room to come back far enough to clean out just to the right of this bracket. Seven eighths for the Guru adapter in the inch and a quarter I'll be using that one for the grommet for the uh, wireless thermometer ports for the wires to go through alright I could have got a step bit but when I started out with this project Lowe's that I went to didn't have the size I needed because I drilled a larger hole for another project so I went to Ace Hardware and ended up getting these uh, hole saw bits made by Milwaukee. They're real good. You have to have the larger arbor 
for the larger bit and the smaller arbor for the 7 8 bit. Anyway, you know, I could have probably shopped around or online and got the step bit, but it is what it is, and it'll do the job. Hold okay, on, I'll show you Before you guys start laughing at my old drill, my half-inch drill, is Craftsman, <laughs> 41 years old. It has some sentimental uh, value to me. When I was on a work crew 35 years ago, uh, we had this drill on the truck. And uh, when that crew disbanded and I moved on to other jobs with the company, the power company, uh, they got rid of all the stuff that we used. And I was able to get this drill and bring it home and keep it. So it's a keepsake. We used to use this a long time ago, and so it still works, you know. It's not a, a top-of-the-line drill by any means, but back in the day, Craftsman was a good tool, as you older fellas know. So that's why I'm, I have this. I'm using it in a uh, little sentimental day. All right, let's drill a hole. Okay, as you can see, I have my hole marked here. And uh, I've got my bit ready. This this is an uh, inch and a quarter bit. And so I'm going to drill this out for the uh, grommet for my wireless thermometer. Right, to feed let's see what we can do with it. Actually, I'm going to go right above. I'm going to get a little closer to the top rim of this thing. All right. One more thing on drilling these holes, if you drill a hole in the kettle, drill from the inside out. You can't hardly drill through this porcelain enamel. That is some tough stuff. Your drill will sit on top of that forever and spin and won't dent it. So go on the inside and drill out and it'll, it'll work just fine. And start with a small drill first, of course, that's with any kind of drilling and metal. Do your pilot holes, maybe step up one more and then go with the size you want in the drill. Dang. Alright. It ain't pretty, but I got it. I need to dress that hole up a little bit. Be right back. All right, I'm going to take this this file here and just kind of make sure it's uh, got all the sharp edges off. I'll show you what we're going to do next. Hold on. All right, I'm using this uh, high heat paint. This is black, but it's okay because this is going to be covered up by the grommet anyway. It's just in the rim of the hole. And uh, I'm just going to spray a little bit on this Q-tip. And I'm going to go around this hole. This will be my little paintbrush. And uh, you won't see any black. I know the kettle's red. But you won't see any black because that grommet will cover all of that. And it'll make me feel better knowing that my hole is protected and it won't rust. Right, okay, here we go again. Let's see what we can do with this one. That's, that porcelain enamel on the outside, that is some hard stuff. That drill bit will hardly go through it. You have to pop your smaller hole and drill from the inside. Alright, I got a little higher speed drill this time. See my hole, I'm gonna dress that one out, put some paint in it, and uh, put my guru adapter on. Alright guys, here we go. I'll show you what it is. I got it. See my hole there? I'll clean that up. This uh guru, it has a an end with some threads on it. it this comes in from the inside. This comes in from the inside and just screws into that. Simple as that. And this is just large enough to sit outside of that hole. So what we'll do 
as we'll get our screw started. All right, so position that to where it's covering the hole real good. Don't see any, any hole. That's why I went seven eighths and not an inch. All right, now we can tighten that up with a Phillips. Okay, we'll just snug that down. My pit viper fan for the barbecue guru. You take this little plug out and this fan just slides right up in here. I have to use it a few times to get it to where it'll slide in a little easier, but there we go. That's how that looks. All right, guys. I think I'm just about there. I ran into a little problem. As you saw earlier, you have to mount this thing below the charcoal. Well, that's what they want you to do. It's probably all right to mount it a little above because it has this venting hole that blows the air down so even if you were right above the charcoal grate but the heat from the charcoal is probably best for it to go below but anyway i went below just below barely but what i ran into is the uh the clean out paddles on the kettle uh was hitting you know this side it this came on down this came on down to here and I took my Dremel and cut that off and you know you can see where I beveled it up so I believe I, I got that problem solved and we'll see in just a minute I'm getting ready to put it back on and I'll show you what I'm talking about all right guys as you can see that paddle went uh, right up under that vent for that guru adapter but since I took my Dremel and bevel back the side here at the bottom it, and this is beveling down tight to the uh, kettle you can see it works now I mean, it's, it's going to be over here in this area anyway it will not interfere with the guru blowing the fan blowing so when I go to clean it out I can still do it no problem all right got that done and as you can see, uh, here's the grommet. Got that done. So let me uh, put everything back together and I'll show you what it looks like. Hey, if you have a Weber Smoky Mountain, you know uh, what this grommet, how much uh, good it is, how much it helps. You can just punch your, your wires through for your thermometer or whatever else you got, your guru. Just push them through and this thing a whole four or five wires you know you can get a lot of wires through there there's a small one up here for one more small item but uh here we go uh got that working now we'll put it back together and see what it looks like working okay guys this is what it looks like same old kettle weber kettle Red limited edition. All right, I got my grommet in there. Look at there, just like it needs to be. Got my wireless thermometer, smoke set up. Got my dragon wing on there. <laughs> I love that. That's a, a great little accessory cheap i mean it, it is that easy that fast to put on i keep it in my box over there when i get ready to cook you just take it out and bam you got your little side shelf that's the greatest thing you can spend money on right there for a kettle one of them anyway all right around here is my guru fan and there she is uh looks good yep so, I got those two mods done. There it sits. Okay, I just wanted to show that to you. In case you wanted to put a grommet on yours for your uh, probe wires to slide through in and out. And in case you get a guru. And you can see, 
it works just fine. I had to do a little bit of adjusting with my Dremel and cut that little piece of metal back where the out blades would go under it. Other than that, it's fine. And that's stainless steel. It won't rust, so it didn't do any, any harm there. So there you have it. All right, this is Phil and Florence. I'll see you on the next one.